Arataki Ito's banner just dropped, as well as the weapon banner, and they're okay. I don't know about you guys, but I'm skipping. But that's not because this is a bad banner, it's just because I don't need anyone on this banner for any of my accounts. Well, my third account needs Xiangling, but I don't want to get any of the other characters on this banner, so... Xiangling will also come back, so that's why I'm skipping on all three of my accounts. Again, this is not because this is a bad banner. Let's talk about the four stars first. Xiangling is basically a five star character, especially at C4, and everyone gets a free copy of her after completing Spiral Abyss, floor three, chamber three. So even if you're a new player, this will probably be already C1 for you. So if you get one or a few copies of Shangling from wishing on this banner, it's a win-win. Barbara used to be kind of useless in the meta, but since the release of the Ocean Hued Clam artifact set, she's still not OP, but she now gives a bit more to your team than just healing and freezing. What's that? The freezing is not for enemies? Oh, for you! Oh, the freezing is for you! Sorry, my bad. And Goro. So if you have Bennett with any of your teams now, Imagine that, but for Geo teams only. So here are his charged and normal attacks, just like any other bow user, nothing special. Where he stands out as a Geo team support are his skill and his burst. Pressing it puts it down, and holding it just lets you aim where you want to put it. And it has a pretty big AoE too. Characters in the AoE get buffs according to how many members in the party are Geo. Having one character in the team just gives you a defense bonus, which is still good for defense scaling characters like Jin Yan and other characters. Having two Geo characters also gives you increased resistance to interruption. Though I'm not sure how much you'll be wanting this buff anyway, because if you're running a Geo team, you'll probably already want to take advantage of the Geo resonance, which means you'll likely have a shielder already, which already stops you from getting interrupted in the first place. And a lot of other characters already provide resistance and eruption, like Xing Cho with his rain swords, Beidou's burst, and so on. Now, if you have three Geo characters, you'll get those two bonuses, and you get a Geo damage bonus. His burst does basically the same thing as his skill with a few bonuses. The AoE follows the active character. It does AoE Geo damage to one enemy within the AoE, similar to Albedo's skill. But you don't have to do normal attacks to proc it. It just ticks on its own every 1.5 seconds. And shields created by Crystallize within the AoE get sucked up towards you every 1.5 seconds. So you're going to want to bring at least one character on the team who isn't Geo to apply an element to enemies to generate Crystallize shields. So on paper, Goro looks like he's going to be a pretty good support for defense scaling Geo, similar to how Kujo Sera at High Constellation is good at supporting Electro. Alright, let's talk about Big Daddy himself. Arataki numero uno Ito. Here are his normals and charge attack animations. His whole kit seems to revolve around the superlative super strength mechanic he has. We're probably going to be saying superlative super strength a bunch just to talk about the character banner. So why don't we just keep a counter just to see how many times you actually say superlative super strength. He gains one stack on the second and fourth hits of his normal attack combo. Superlative Super Strength can have up to 5 stacks. Note, his normal attack combo doesn't reset immediately if you sprint or use his skill. Which means you'll be able to weave in some sprints to dodge enemy attacks and use his skill while you're doing his normal attacks. His charged attacks consume his Superlative Super Strength stacks and when consuming the last stack, it does a big slash. Kinda looks like this. Boom. That's the last slash. His skill, Masatsu Zetsugi, Akaushi Burst, summons Ushi, kind of like how you summon Amber's Baron Bunny. Pressing just drops him in front of you, and holding lets you aim where you want to drop him. It's kind of similar to Ganyu's Flower since it does damage when you summon it. Though I have to admit, this one's pretty cute with its little dance. He's really vibing. If you hit an enemy when you summon him, he gives you one stack of superlative super strength. When enemies hit him, you get one stack of superlative super strength as well. You can only get superlative super strength stacks this way once every 2 seconds. When he disappears, you get another stack. His burst, Royal Descent, Behold Ito the Devil, is kinda like C6 Noel's and Razor's bursts put together. Though there's no damage when activating it, his normal, charged, and plunging attacks are converted into Geo and cannot be overridden, just like Noel's burst. His attack speed is increased, and his attack is increased based on his defense, 
This is the Razor Noel Burst combo part. And his elemental and physical resistances are decreased by 20%. Unfortunately, unlike Noel, when switching out of Ito, his burst goes away. In his burst, you gain superlative super strength stacks on the first and third hits of his normal attack instead of the normal second and fourth. So that's the banner. I'm not going to tell you whether you should or shouldn't pull on it. You do have to keep in mind that if you're going all in on Geo teams, if you want to take full advantage of Goro's buffs, you'll need to have three Geo members in your party and one who isn't Animo or Geo to apply an element to enemies so you can crystallize. Just to give yourself some additional shielding since Goro's burst does suck in crystallize shards towards you. And if you're like me who only builds two teams on their entire account for Abyss, if some enemies on one side are Geo but you also need your other elemental DPS on the other side, it's gonna be a bit rough having some enemies be immune to 75% of your team. So if you're free to play, you'll likely have limited resources to pour into building characters and teams, which means you're likely to only be heavily invested in two teams on your account. So if you're pulling for Ito, your Geo team is probably one of your only two teams built well. If you're in this situation, make sure to think about whether you're willing to be potentially in a situation in Abyss where you breeze through all the enemies on one side of a chamber, but waste so much time on one or two enemies who are immune to Geo. But those conditions are very situational. I myself have two free-to-play accounts that have more than two built teams. Though I couldn't very heavily invest into any of the teams, I'm limited to only a moderate amount of investment into all of them, so none of them are too OP. For people who want to pull on this banner for Shangling constellations, make sure you don't mind getting Goro and or Ito, or you actually want to get them, or if you don't want them, make sure to check your pity whether you're willing to risk getting a 5-star you won't use. Xiangling will eventually return on other banners in the future, and you always have a chance of pulling her on any banner she isn't rated up on. Of course, the chances are very low. In the end, the choice will be up to you. Just take all these factors and your own play style and preferences into account before deciding. So now, let's move on to the weapon banner. If you're a new or new-ish player who doesn't have a good roster of characters on your account yet, do not wish on the weapon banner. It's just more value in early game to use your Primo Gems to get a good roster of characters. For those of you who are already happy with the roster of characters on your account and how many constellations you have on them and are just looking to min-max every last bit of damage on your teams, you might want to consider the weapon banner, but I still highly do not recommend it. There have been better weapon banners, so I myself am skipping this one. I just don't need any of the weapons on it. Let's look at the new weapon first, the Red Horn Stone Thresher. So if any of you know the Primordial Jade Cutter, it is one of the best weapons in the game despite having a low base attack. It gives an insane 44% crit rate, which is ridiculous, and it gives attack based on your max HP, and that's why it's so good. It just makes any sword user really good. The Red Horn Stone Thresher though is pretty good stat-wise with 88% crit damage, which is ridiculous on its own, has a low base attack, but isn't universally amazing like the Jade Cutter because it gives 28% defense and increases your normal and charged attack damage by 40% of your defense. OF YOUR DEFENSE The weapon should still do something on other non-defense scaling characters, but if you want to put this on them, just don't. Please. I'm begging you. Just don't. The only defense scaling Claymore characters in the game are Noel, Jinyan, and the soon-to-be-released Arataki Ito. The current F2P go-to weapon for defense scaling Claymore characters right now is the White Blind. Compared to the White Blind, this weapon could be anywhere from a decent to a significant upgrade on defense scaling Claymore characters. I'm no math guy and haven't seen any tests yet since the weapon isn't out yet, so I can't say for sure exactly how much of an upgrade this will be compared to White Blind. If you're running a non-defense scaling Claymore character and are looking to get a weapon upgrade, this is not what you want. Just wait for something universally good, like the Wolf's Gravestone, which has come on a banner before, so I'm sure we'll see it again someday. Maybe. Hopefully. And even if it's not on a banner, it's just permanently available since there's always a chance you can get it on the weapon banner and the standard banner, though the chances of getting it are pretty low. So again, Defense scaling Claymore characters, maybe big upgrade, we don't know yet. If you are looking into getting it, 
just wait at least a couple of days. Wait for whales to come out and test the weapon out. See how much of a difference it is from white blind. Wishing on this banner could be okay as long as you don't mind potentially getting the other 5 star on the banner, the Skyward Harp. It used to be one of the best bows in the game. I mean, it still is kind of, but in terms of damage output, now we have the Thundering Pulse. And some bows like the Amos bow are specialized where they're not good on every character, but they're S tier on the characters they are good on. Skyward Heart isn't a bad weapon to have, honestly. It's just that even some specialized 4-star weapons may be equal to it, and maybe even beat it. And because it's a 5-star, it takes more resources to upgrade it, more Mora, more Mystic Enhancement Ores, and Ascension Materials. If you have Gone Yu and are looking for an upgrade over the Prototype Crescent, this is not the upgrade you're looking for, especially if you have a high refinement Prototype Crescent, since there's almost no difference between the two. I Want to Lose Gaming's got a video on comparing bows on Ganyu, go check it out. If you don't mind not having the highest potential damage on a character, but just want a good bow on your account that you can use on pretty much any damage dealing bow user, Skyward Harp is pretty good. As for the 4 stars, the bell, yikes. The Midnight Waltz, it's okay on a main DPS official, but there are lots of similar or even better options. Havonius Lance. This is a very good general option for supports, especially since it helps generate energy for the whole team. It's not the highest support damage weapon, but it's pretty good since it does have pretty high base attack at 565 at level 90. So it's pretty good on energy hungry supports like Toma. And it's a pretty good idea to put Favonius weapons on your supports, especially if any of your characters on the team are energy hungry. Alley Flash is not universally good, but it does have a really high base attack. In fact, it's even higher than some 5 stars. So it's pretty good on Bennett since giving him high base attack weapon is good for your team since it does increase the attack buff from his burst. And Sacrificial Fragments is the best in slot for Sucrose since it lets you do an extra E on top of your constellation unless if you're running Thrilling Tales of the Dragon Slayer on her and want to give one of the characters on your team the buff from that. So that's the weapon banner. I can't say I could tell you to roll on it, so if you're running a defense scaling claymore user or you're planning to, and your other DPS on the account is a bow user that can benefit from Skyward Harp and you have no good bows on your account, like you have no bow billets to craft or you just don't have any of the other specialized 4 star gacha bows and you want to or don't mind getting any of the 4 star weapons on the banner then trying your luck on this weapon banner may not be such a bad idea. But just make sure you're already happy with the roster of characters you got on your account and or you don't mind using up your primos now and potentially miss out on any of the characters coming soon. As for the other stuff coming out, of course we're getting Ito's character quest and some events too. For some longtime players, you'll be familiar with all of them. They're just rerun events. For the newer players, Misty Dungeon is an event where you have to clear dungeon and comply with a few requirements to claim all the rewards. You can use your own characters, but you can also use some pre-built characters they give you. I think it's a pretty good event because it lets you use characters that we may not have ever used or built yet. Energy Amplifier for Vision. You go to certain places on the map and defeat some enemies to get certain buffs for your team which then you can use in a special event domain where you just need to get a certain score to get the rewards. Marvelous Merchandise. Basically free stuff. Look for the special event NPC Lee Bin in Mondstadt. Give him the things he needs. They're pretty simple everyday stuff and he gives you free stuff like Primo Gems, XP books, and so on. So let me know what you guys think of the banners and what do you think about having an update where we get a new character but all rerun events. Let me know in the comments below. Thanks for watching guys. Like it if you liked it. Subscribe if you want to see more content like this and have a good day.